Hello friends and welcome to the channel. This is Stormhaven Gaming where you can see great games played badly. I'm John and this is Sable. Uh, before we get started please do give us a like and a subscribe it really does help the channel out. I've been really looking forward to diving back into this. Um, the story has very much grabbed me. So uh, we have something to do uh, we have to go and talk to Saizo, who I think is on top of that tower. Yes, he appears to be. Um, but it looks as though JD will speak to us as well. JD greets me warmly. Okay. Hello, little glider. Uh, it's so strange getting called that. That's big glider to you. What was your gliding like? Uh, let's ask about her gliding. I asked JD about her gliding. Tell you what, I'll tell you when you get back. I cross my arms in protest. Pout all you want. I don't want to spoil any surprises. She lowers her voice to a whisper. But I did meet some crystal farmers once. Why does, why does crystal farmer sound like some kind of drug dealer? Crystal farmers. And that's all I'll say about that. You should get going. Okay, let's get going. Um, I have no idea if this is the right way, but it, it seems to be good. I mean, this this stairs right there. I should have taken them. Ooh. I love the way she runs. It's so evocative. Ah. Uh, Saizo is an outclanner to the Ibexii, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall. And I think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given to their posts are given their posts, and by their training and their code, must go to where they are needed. But Saizo has been among us so long it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there is a perception among the other clans that the Ibexii are quite insular, or that our designation of Ibexii versus outclanners suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us, and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Saizo did. Okay, so we've got a bit of, uh, bit of lore there. So the Abexii are nomads. Um, so this is clearly a, a temporary camp. Um, interesting. Okay. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Better now that I'm getting a bike. Excited for, ooh, excited for my bike. A bit worried, am I really getting a bike? Let's go with that one. Saizo has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, JD told me how excited you were. Saizo sniffs. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't begrudge Driss's forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hoverbike parts yourself. Uh, I'm going to make my own hoverbike. That sounds like an adventure. Technically, shouldn't Driss do it. Um, let's be enthusiastic. That sounds like an adventure. I tell Saizo I like the sound of that. A little adventure before my big one. It's more meaningful than you know. To bond with one's bike before it's taken form is more privileged than labour. Here, take this. Saizo hands me something. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. I ask Saizo where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships, and fragments spread apart. A good start would be, be the ship down there near the camp. You'll find another up on that great rock, near the other side of the canyon. And another behind the old dam on the hill. 
Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Uh, I'll be back before you know it. This is quite a lot of work. Do most gliders make their own bikes? I ask Saizo if most gliders really make their own bikes. Only the lucky ones. I tell Saizo I'll see her soon and head off in search of the components. Together we will create something new out of the old. Okay. So we have a navigator. Let's use my navigator. Oh, okay. So I can move it around like this. And it's quite difficult to um, actually figure out where the marker is. Um, I think that's right. Um, did I place... Yes, I did, I think. Okay. Let's, um, ooh, let's loot this box. Yes, another 20 things. Whatever they are, I still have no idea what they are. I assume they're coins. Is someone whistling? Yeah, someone's whistling. Who's whistling? It's a very long stack. Ooh, hello. As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Something on your mind? You seem tired. What are you looking at? Something on your mind? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's Ilaria over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Ilaria. Um... Okay, I'll take your word for it. I can't see her. Uh, up there, maybe? Anyway. Uh, do you want me to get her back? Does she need help? Does she need help? Zeki shakes her head. No, she's fine, and I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. Uh, okay, where is my bike? My bike is over here. Somewhere. Ah, it's over there. Whee! Okay, now I want to go this way. Towards the old ship. Oh dear, oh, oh no, that's not good. Oh, this thing is terrible. Okay, so, this looks interesting. Ooh, a glowing thing. Ooh, so this is the old wrecked ship, is it? Now, there's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. Push the button or leave it alone. Well, I've clearly got to push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording. It's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Ramin. Concentrate. I don't think I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. All right, let's see if what that old machinist told us holds up. If not, there'll be hell to pay. I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks. Buttons being pressed, perhaps. Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, Ramen. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, on Rahana's mask. Not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. And then the sounds of someone cheering. It worked. We're flying. More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? 
Okay, okay, let's focus. This thing is moving fast and we need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Ramen? Let me check the machinist's notes. A long pause. The rumbling static sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Ramen? That lever, Toma. The one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to... The recording cuts off there. Okay, so there's nothing on this ship then. Hmm. Oh, we have a cutscene. Seima, are you looking for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Seima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice... You won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get to me. Uh, give it back, Saima. May I please have it? You're a horrible child. May I please have it? I decide to be gentle and ask her, may I please have it? May I please have it? She mimics me terribly, all high and screechy. Despite my best efforts, I seethe. Oh well, too bad. Maybe you'll find it on your own, but I don't think so. Saima laughs off my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put out my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want? I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator, or to acquiesce. But then I simply stifle a sigh and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. Okay. So. Let's have a look. Beetle detour. Ask around the camp to find out how to catch beetles. Yeah. So that looks like what what I'm doing next. So, let's see. We have found the beetles. Okay, but they will run away from us, apparently. We were told that they are scared of people and will run away uh, and hide if we get too close. Uh, apparently we can find seeds uh, that will distract them and then they will uh, become easier to catch. Um, I don't know if anything, any of these are seeds. Well, they look like seeds, don't they? Let's have a look. Let's see if we can... Gather those. Oh. That looked like it did the trick. Oh, I'm exhausted. Hang on. Oh, I can throw this. Aha! We have a beetle. Where are you, beetles? Come here. Come on, Ringo. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Where's he gone? Um, okay. So, now I need to give to Saima. She likes to play in the cave underneath the camp. There's a cave underneath the camp. Bet that's where she's hidden the uh, the thing I'm looking for. So presumably the option was there to just go and find the cave and uh, retrieve the part yourself. Oh well, never mind. We have found some beetles. I will go and find Sema, and then we can continue. Okay, I think we found her. 
I feel embarrassingly vindicated as I hand same of the Beatles, but rather than gloat, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving. You're leaving and you'll never come back. Uh, so I can comfort her or let her cry it out. I think... Um, I think we'll comfort her. She blows her nose and wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. Um, I miss her too. She might visit again someday. People leave. That's their choice. Uh, people leave. That's their choice. I tell Saima that Yara is allowed to do whatever she likes. And that if it's her choice to go, then we must respect it. I wonder if she can tell I'm putting a little extra weight in my voice. Which I hope sounds like the wisdom of age. You wouldn't leave forever, right? Uh, well or not not forever. I start to speak, but Saima cuts me off with a wail. Please don't go. I tell Saima not to worry, that I'll be back sooner than she knows, and I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And I add that if I am not back sooner than she knows, then she'll be ready for her gliding by then, and she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I suppose I can come see you off. I thank her, and say goodbye for now. Okay, so that is the first of our um, bike parts collected. Now, they said the others were right over to the east, I think. Um, I think up on the rocks to the east, so over in that direction, presumably. Uh, and then the other one was up behind the old dam. Which is somewhere. Uh, over that way. There. Okay, so I'll go up to the old dam and see if we can find something there. Okay, I am up on the old dam. And, I mean, it's a lovely view. Um, but let's have a look around and see what we can find. Oh, there's a crate. Oh, a lever. I mean... I mean, that's some good engineering. It still works after all this time, however long it may have been. Um, now, how do I get across there? I suppose I just have to try and climb up. Yeah, okay. Let's try and do that. We made it through the dam, and we have found this wreckage. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything else around, at least at first glance. Um, can't see any boxes or anything. Let's see if we can get into this first. Uh, yes, but there's nothing in it. Okay, right. Let's have a look. What is that? I don't know, but it probably goes in here. Okay. So, powering things is a thing. Good to know. Oh, this is a very nice design. I love this industrial look. Okay, atomic control panel. I have one. And that appears to be all there is in here. Yep, okay. Now the last one was over to the east. So that's going to take some getting to. I'll see you shortly.
Okay, a significant amount of platforming later, and I think I'm where I need to be. That looks hopeful. Atomic power supply, look at that. Okay. Appears to be nothing else up here of any real interest. Uh, now, where's my bike? Over there. There it is. Well, that was easy. Okay, back to Saizo. I am definitely of the opinion that this bike is getting slower and more rattly as we progress. It's also terrible to drive, as you can see. Oops, just crashed into a person. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll get off of that now. <clears throat> right. Um, where do I need to go? I need to go right to the top of that tower. So there is going to be some more platforming going on. Okay. Let's do a little bit of reviewing the game so far. I think it's fairly obvious that I really like it. I mean, beyond the art style, um, the story is being laid out in... It's not holding your hand. It's not over explaining anything. It's just laying in these little bits of lore that you can then go on to find out more about. Um, I think it's very cleverly done. I like the uh, written narrative, the, the first person narrative. Uh, I think that's quite a nice touch. It has that, again, it, it lends itself to that comic book style, um, which obviously the, the, the art helps as well but yeah I, I'm, I am really enjoying it the the platforming bits are <coughs> excuse me they are platforming bits they are fairly fairly standard the the climbing mechanic and uh, the gliding mechanic is probably probably owes a, a bit of a debt to breath of the wild although i've not played it i have seen it being played um yeah that that seems a little bit inspired by Breath of the Wild, shall we say. Um, but in many ways, that's what Nintendo is for. It's to make games that go on to inspire other great games. Right, let's talk to Saizo. I return to Saizo with the parts, and it says, uh, as she waves me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? Uh, I'm ready. Actually, there's some things I want to do first. Uh, I'm ready, I think. Then let us head to the workshop. Yes, let's. Saizo relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that one only truly appreciates when Saizo is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the components you acquired, they fit together, not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod and feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Okay, so I need to assemble the machine, do I? So this is presumably the base. Okay. No, what do I do? Let's put it down. Up and down on the floor. Um... That doesn't do anything. Okay, let's go and talk to... Oops. Saizo? No, it's the same thing. Okay. So we fitted that on. Uh, next. 
Where does this go? This goes on here, does it? Ooh, wings. Okay, and then finally... Ah, that goes on there. The gliding bike front. Oh, and that's lit up. Our bike is being assembled. Uh, now I have to speak to Saizo. Listen. Saizo tilts ahead a moment, leaning closer to... Simoon. All at once, I know the hoverbike's name. Simoon. I say it in a whisper to let Saizo know. Simoon, Simoon. Well done, Sable. Uh, does she want to go with me? Okay, so we're already uh, giving it a personality. Does she want to go with me? She does, clan child. Simoon has a wandering spirit, like you, I think. I tell Simoon that I am eager to know her better, and Saizo looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Saizo is prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Simoon, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here. Take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more badges. I thank Sozo twice for good measure and give a bow. I am ready. I should speak to JD about the final gliding ceremony. Okay, so Simoon is my my bike, but I can't use her yet. Uh, and I need to go and talk to JD. Uh, although I have probably missed a whole bunch of side quests and things here. Can I talk to you again? Uh, Hillel quotes from a selection of obscure and lyrically mediocre Ibexio historical ballads whenever I pass by. There is a great verse that says much about our folk buried under sand. Okay. Okay. Sable, that cartographer landed his balloon while you were away. You should go speak to him, see if you can't get a map. I nod and begin to go, but JD gestures me back and puts something in my hand. Here's some money to get you going on your journey. Use it mostly wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. Okay, so that stuff is money. We were, we were not far off on that. Okay. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. Ah, words of wisdom, JD. Words of wisdom. I thank JD effusively and head out on my way. Okay, so I need to talk to the cartographer. Um, who is this way? Ah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure that somebody told me that not everybody can glide or that it's a skill that people lose. Which rather suggests that most people won't be able to get to this chap. So he's parked in a rather silly place. Oh, well, Aria, the balloon was more fun than the person in it. Okay. That's a very interesting mask you have there, my friend. I approach the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my Greek balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? Uh, she really is longingly. It's bigger than I thought. She really is. I nod enthusiastically. It really is an impressive vessel, however nervous I get imagining being up there all alone. I wonder if anyone's ever fallen off of one. 
Best not to ask right now. Well, good to meet you, and... Oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. I suppose if you've come all this way to see me, it's probably a map you're after, eh, Sable? Uh, I would love a map. I tell the cartographer I'd love a map. Of course you would. That would be 50 cuts. Okay, so the currency is called cuts. Uh, I'll buy that map. Perfect, let's trade then. Aha, a trading map. One, confirm. Ah, I seem to have nothing left for you. Hurrah. Okay. Okay, hello. I can't seem to back out of this screen for some reason. Okay, we've managed to purchase the map this time. I'm not sure what happened there. A bit of a glitch, maybe. Uh, still in early access, so you can expect to have the occasional thing like that happen. But it's worked this time, so... Uh, good luck on your gliding sable. I still remember mine. I ask how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you. From Hakoa to the Sodic Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip and say goodbye. Farewell, child. Okay. So, we have completed all these quests. And we should now go back and speak to JD again. Here she is. I return to JD with a new lightness. And it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Sizo gave it to me. Look at me, JD. I'm already gliding. I take up the badge and hold it out for closer examination. So close, in fact, that JD chuckles and has to take a small step back. Saizo must have really felt you earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be headed for the mask cast... The mask caster? Hmm. In no time. I try to think about going to a mask caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Imagine choosing what I want to be forever. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry about it. You'll get plenty of badges when you're out there, and once you've got three alike, you can trade it in for that mask. But don't feel like your first mask is your final choice. The gliding is about freedom and exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will be you be choose to ask. Will you be asked to choose one? Uh, how will I choose one? Which one should I choose? How will I choose one? You'll have to feel it out. But when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts the butterflies back in my stomach. With all of this done, there is only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rohanna. There you'll assemble your gliding mask. And go. There are things I wish to convey to JD here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. And though I find myself unable to speak any of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child. I made you these. They are dyed with the traditional Ibexii maroon, and I hope provide you great comfort out in the desert. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Ibexii. You will simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter where your journey takes you, I will always know you. I will always love you. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. And I am ready. I should head to the temple to begin my gliding. Okay, I should 
Do I want to get my bike? I think I probably want to get my bike, don't I? Oops. I don't know if this is the right direction for my bike. Where's my bike? I can't remember. No, this is definitely not the right... Oh, this is my bike. Ah, but I can't use it yet. So I have to use the other bike. The rubbish bike. Okay, well I'll do that and... I will get to the temple and find the face door. I just remembered I got new clothes, so I should probably put those on. There we go. So I've got glider trousers and glider top. So it's a longer cloak by the looks of it. There we go. Ooh. It drifts in the wind. Nice. I like it. Good choice of style. Okay, and this door is open, which it wasn't before. The face door has opened. Clearly a platforming section. Um, let's see. Okay, there's something up there, which I can presumably get to. Um, oh, spinning the camera around a little bit wildly there. Sorry about that. Right, let's get over here. Okay, keep heading up, I suppose. Now, I can definitely go get across there, I suspect, but I think I'm wanting to press this button. Right, okay, next. More platforming. Can I get up here? No, I cannot. Okay. I need to get up onto there. So, uh, around. Oh, nearly tripped over. Okay, as, as you can no doubt tell, I was always terrible at platformers. And that hasn't changed. A nice little statue of an archer here. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Ooh, nearly fell off. There we go. Another bit of some kind of mask. Okay. Um, was there three of those? Yes. Here. There's the other one. Right. How do I get up here? This looks convenient. Okay, and jump across to there. And some kind of headdress. Ooh, it's glowing.
Okay, that's not creepy at all. Okay, I assume that that's my mask. Wherever it is. Yeah, that's a little creepy. So I've got an Ibexi mask, and now I have to return to the camp. Okay. Do I put the mask on now? I should probably put the mask on now, right? God, I'm stuck on a ladder. Oh, I told you I was terrible at platformers. Come on, up the ladder. Here we go. And back out. And I will, I will, yeah, I'll wait till I'm outside and then I'll put the, uh, the mask on. Okay, and we are outside. We're going to put the mask on, but... I've just noticed that the cartographer's balloon is gone and there is no smoke rising from the village. Okay, well, let, let's put the, uh, put the mask on. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. In fact, let's go to... I'm going to just take a quick screenshot. There we go. That's a, that's a good position. Yeah. Okay, and let's go and find what's happened at the village. Because I suspect something has happened at the village. Now, where did I leave my bike? It's not showing up. My bike was right here. Okay, yes. Something has definitely occurred. message in the post box, presumably. Hello, Sable. JD's voice echoes strangely through the machine, yet still it warms me. Well, Sable, this is it. By the time you hear this, we will have gone. The gliding is a journey that must begin alone. There is a certain nuance lost in transmission, and for that I am grateful. It would be far too much to hear the cracks in her voice, and not run weepily into her arms to stay forever. But I am ready. And so I close my eyes and listen. But though you go by yourself, you are not without friends. You are not without family. You are not without love. These things you will always carry with you as you do your mask. And I know I'm not supposed to do this, but if I were you, I might go and see Utari, the, the, machinist, the machinist at Burnt Oak Station and among Saizo's closest friends. Atari is a good contact to have on one's gliding, and a fine way to get another machinist badge if you're so inclined. Only suggestion, though. As for us, I'll send another message once we've returned to the Ewer, so keep an eye on the post boxes. And try not to forget us. She takes a long breath, and I forget that things as easy as breathing could ever exist. The world is waiting, Sable. Good luck. And now I have to leave the canyon, but uh, I have a call out. Ooh. I 
I don't know what... Oh, hello. Ooh. It's my bike. Oh, and it's already so much better than that piece of junk I was riding. Oh, yes. Oh, and I love that long, solid block colour of the uh, engine and the, the, the trails off the wings. And Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Okay. And we have to leave the canyon. And we will do that at the beginning of the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I am loving this game. Please do give us a like and a subscribe. Um, please leave us a comment. Please get people to play this game because it's so good. It's so good. Um, but I've been John. This has been Stormhaven Gaming. And this has been Sable. Until next time, thank you very much for joining us. Take care. Stay safe. And bye-bye.